Once again, live in the War Room, brought to you by War Room Sports on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. I'm one of your hosts. I'm Dev McMillan. I'm at the round table with my brother, Jimmy the Blueprint. For y'all going to join us most likely in the second hour. Look, NFL Week 3 may have been the dawning of a new age in New York. We'll discuss the debut of Danny Dimes, is what they like to call him, and preview some things to come in Week 4. So keep it locked right here. And if you want to get in on the conversation, sign in right now to the JW Philly Realty chat room at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room, or you can join us on Facebook or Twitter at War Room Sports. You can also call us directly in about 15 minutes after we gamble with Gus and talk college football with Fred Purdue and open up the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline. That number is 323-410-0012. But before we get started, make sure that during the week, we're not live on the air. You can check out archive episodes of our show. And all the other shows on the War Room Sports Podcast Network, right at the hub at warroomsports.com, the War Room Sports mobile app, which is free, also on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spreaker, right here on Blog Talk Radio, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, and most other places you do your podcast listening. Jimmy, what up, Ock? What's good, cuz? How you? I'm I'm good, man. Is this... um? Been you know a lot of stuff going down this week in America. Is this Trump impeachment yeah. finally gonna you know is it finally something gonna happen on this? <clears throat> no, no. I mean it's it's no, nah. <laughs> Just straight up no. Just nah. <laughs> they drawing man. They drawing. They gonna make it. You know what? Nah. Yeah, I, I mean, but I remember when we brought it up briefly the other day in the chat. You were saying even if it happened. Like, this is probably going to end up energizing his base. This is probably what the best thing that could happen for him prior to an election. I think, Jim, when I talk to people, I think I don't think a lot of people realize what impeachment actually is. I think when people hear impeach, they just think that means being removed from office when indeed, you know, when in fact, you know, impeachment, like, you know, is just actually being yeah, brought up on formal charges and then. They, you know, from there, they're going to try to remove you from office. But for me, it seems well, like a lot of people are like, yeah, impeach him. And then the next dude comes in. No, that's not how it works. But but I why, agree why with your point. Get, why let facts get in the way of a good story, man? And, and the timing is just crazy, man. <clears throat> right. Right. No, it, it definitely is. But it's always something. <laughs> always something mm-hmm. going on uh, as far as that front is concerned. So we'll see what happens, man. We'll see if the Dems finally stop talking about stuff and start doing. But like I said, I kind of agree with your point. I think an impeachment at this point would do nothing but rile yep. up his base, get them out in record numbers, and, and have him win another <laughs> election. So see how it goes. Yeah. All right, but for yeah, right man. now... No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just gonna say, man. Like we spend so much time worrying about the boogeyman that they don't get nothing constri- like nothing good gets done. Nah, nah. All right, so look, we're here to talk some sports, and we're gonna do just that. But before we do, because we got uh, Gus with his picks, um, we got hear a little bit from Fred Purdue. Um, also, tell you guys about Fred's new gig. But before we do that, we gotta let you guys know that hot topics. Brought to you by my bookie. If you guys are interested in, in how much cash you can make betting on sports, at my bookie, 
Just listen up for a minute. The NFL is in full swing. As you know, every week here on our show, Gus Griffin drops some gems on you. He's about to do that for week four. So if you still haven't checked out my bookie, this is the perfect time to check them out. You can put down some cash on the biggest games in sports. Hockey is about to start up. The baseball playoffs are, are approaching. The NFL is here. College football is here. It's no excuse not to join us and thousands of other online players placing bets at mybookie.ag. If you guys are tired of getting a runaround from whatever service you use right now when it's time for them to pay up, that's why we we urge you to give mybookie a try. You win, they, they pay fast, no hassles. You're basically wasting your time betting anywhere else. They even have in-game live betting so you can place wages after the game starts. So join now and mybookie will match your first deposit up to $1,000. Yep, just use the promo code WARROOM, W A R. R-O-O-M, all caps, to activate this offer. Visit mybookie.ag today. Play, win, and get paid. Period. Nothing else to the story. All right, so we're going to get Gus on the line here. We're going to get these picks in. Gus, you there? Yes, how are you? Man, I'm good. I'm good. You know, a little, little bit nervous. You know, my, my, my eagles have... I don't know what people are calling in week four. Uh, I mean, week three, uh, or what, what is this? Week four? Week four, a must-win situation. I don't know if it's possible to be in a must-win situation in week four, but you do not want to lose another game, have the Cowboys win another game, and you're three games behind that quickly um, in the division race. So, uh, Gus, true. two and one last week, six and six. Even 500 for the year. We're going to jump up over that right now. So we're going to start off with the Thursday night contest. The Eagles at the Packers. Uh, the line on this one is four points. Where are you going with it? I'm taking the Eagles plus the four. Um, the Packers defense, they face the Bears, Vikings, and Broncos. Hardly offensive juggernauts, neither of them. And... Um, and they, so they haven't really been challenged to the level I think they need to be challenged for me to believe in that defense. Um, even right. banged up, the Eagles present more weapons than either of those three teams. And, and they get Jeffrey back tonight. And I wouldn't say must win, but there's a sense of urgency. So I'm taking the Eagles plus that four. And I also want to use that as my upset special, Eagles. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely a sense of urgency need, is needed here. And you mentioned the offenses that they played, like, throughout their woes and, you know, losing two games out of the three. The Eagles are still, what, number nine offense in the league this early in the season? They score points. Yeah, they yeah, score points. They, they score points. The, the problem with them is they just wait too long to start playing. You know, they can yeah, yeah. You know, get up a little earlier, then they can help you out with that upset <laughs> special this week. All right, so – um, the Bears Vikings. That is a, a nice divisional matchup, and that is a two point line at the moment. What you doing with that one? Taking the Bears minus that two and run with it. Um, the, the the Bears have, I believe, the best defense in football, um, and the Vikings have Kirk Cousins. I mean, that really should be the end of my commentary. On <laughs> the man, he simply isn't a big game play, big game player. It sounds, it sounds. Uh, oxymoronic to say this, but Washington got it right. They got it right. This guy is not a big game quarterback. He hasn't beat any defenses of note, and this is the defense of note. I heard one stat um, where every game where the Vikings throw 15 passes or less, they're 15. I'm, I'm every every game where they throw 15 passes or less since Cousins got there, they're undefeated. Well, 15 passes is not going to beat that Bear defense. Take the Bears minus the two. All right. Um, our next one is over under um, Tampa Bay versus the Los Angeles Rams. The over under on that one is 49 and a half points. What you got? I'm taking the over. Um, the Rams, obviously a better team. They're about 10 point favorites. Um, I can see the Rams getting out to a big lead early, in which case the Tampa will have to open it up and, and, and throw the ball and it may be a back door cover because that line has actually gone down. Uh, so it may be a back door cover, but I think that's going to be a relatively high scoring game. Now the Rams ha- defense has actually played pretty well this year, uh, better than last year. They just scored so much, particularly the first oh, three fourths of the season last year to where um, they didn't get really hurt 
um, their defense, um, with their defense really not being superiorly good. But I think this is going to be a shootout um, over 49 and a half. All right, and last but not least, we have the Super Bowl champion. I mean, we have the Cleveland Browns versus <laughs> the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens are a seven-point favorite here at home. Where are you going with this? I'm taking the Browns plus the seven. Even when they weren't good, they have always played the Ravens well, and I'm not sure what you know what that is about it. Uh, some of it, I just think division familiarity. Uh, I think it tends to favor the underdog. Um, you know, for the teams that are too lazy to watch film, if it's a division full, they can get away with it a little bit. Um, and it, it, it's a it's a critical point for the Browns. They also it's not a I wouldn't say it's a must win, but there's a there's a sense of urgency. They've been hyped so much. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how Baker Mayfield and the, the likes of Odell Beckham handle all that attention, particularly in a situation like this. But I think that they're going to be able to stay close enough to make this a competitive game. Browns plus seven. All right. The only thing in this game that I care about at this point is will Baker Mayfield pass Jarvis Landry the ball because he is on my fantasy team and I'm starting to get <laughs> upset about this, the way he's forcing the ball in the Beckham. Should have known. All right. So that is it for this week. We'll see how everything fares. Like I said, two and one last week, uh, 500 for the season at six and six. Um, everybody go out there, place your bets. Let's go. All right, Gus. Um, we'll see how it goes. You got anything uh coming down the pike on the in the web on the website? Uh no, it's just it's too much in the embryonic stages, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave it alone. Hopefully early next week. All right, cool. And we'll talk to you next week, man. We appreciate it as usual. All right, take care. All right. Gus Griffin, everybody. Go get your picks in, get your bets in. Yeah, man. Um Jimmy, I'm, I'm the, this game tonight, man. <laughs> you know me. After the after the Super Bowl season, like the, the Eagles, still. I mean, they still kind of on the grace period for me. I really don't care how they finish. Um, but I, but I assume that at some point that's gonna wear off and they're gonna know, have to know be good again. Watch, I know you're not trying to watch the uh, you're not trying to watch it in 4K and uh, you know. I know. I see them clearly get their ass whooped. I'm not trying to see that. <laughs> Because it's definitely on 4K uh, this evening. If any of you guys out there have Direct TV and you have a 4K box, they are broadcasting the game on, I believe it's channel 105, uh, one of the 4K channels. Um, Direct TV, cut us a check for the advertisement. Um, all right, so we, we got Fred Purdue. We got the homie on the line. Fred Purdue, who is still family, but is doing something new these days. So we'd like to introduce to you the new host of the Locked On Kings podcast, Miami Hurricanes specialty podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network, the newest host, Fred Perdue. Fred, what's going on, good brother? And congratulations on congratulations on the new program. And Fred is still War Room family, if y'all are, you know, wondering, but, you know. He he's yeah, doing some some man. bigger and better you know, things. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So w- when does the program start? We are in the launching stages. Uh, we, we got a little loose end, some contract talks to get taken care of. But once that's all, the particulars are taken care of. You know, got to get my bread too. But you know, when that those kind of things are taken care of, you know. We'll have a full time, full day. It'll be within the next month or so. Everything will be launched out, and we'll have a full Locked On Canes um, show. It'll be a five days a week show. It'll be featuring myself, uh, my co host Corey Joyner, as well as former Miami Hurricane and national champion Kelvin Harris from the 1987 to, to 1991 teams. Ah, uh, the, the old head teams. <laughs> Fred, and Fred, Jimmy, what Fred basically just said is, you know, we start when when they cut that check. I, I feel you. <laughs> basically, basically. When they cut basically. that check, we can start this show. Hey, hey, Fred, but no, when, do once they, the show you, does they, get up and running, know you, you know, we'll let everybody. Or no? <laughs> we'll let everybody. Uh, I was just saying, when, uh, when everything gets started, we'll let everybody know how they can listen to it. 
um, you know, of course we'll promote it out there for you. But my bad, go ahead, Jim. Are they aware you went? Are they? I don't say are they aware you went to Florida State or you you, you didn't? Hey, 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 hey! I'm not yeah. on the route, man. Keep that on the route. Hmm. Oh, okay, oh, okay. Hmm. Let me, let me All right. So you know, Fred's his uh, appearances here will be the same. Um, he's going to give you analysis on three of the Pick'em games. Usually, it's going to be four because he's going to give you the three that we choose every week plus analysis on Miami and whoever they're playing that particular week because that's that's what he does now. So we got to hear about those Canes, about that U. But since they're on a bye this week, before you give us analysis on the three Pick'em games, just give us a brief state of the program um, for the Miami Hurricanes after four games? Well, State of the U hasn't been all that great. I've been spending a lot of time wanting to throw my remote at the wall or a TV or just, I don't know, man. It's it's not been that great uh, after a 2-2, and 0-2 uh, start, losing to the University of Florida in a game where there were 10 sacks, two freshman tackles playing, a freshman quarterback playing. It wasn't br- – it wasn't – really all that great and a kicker that just kickers drive me up the wall I don't understand the mentality of a coach that leaves there leaves a game in the hands of a kicker um but the unit the Florida game it was a bad showing even if you're in a game kick the field goal you know you you have momentum and then your kicker has a little confidence. Don't go for it on the one-yard line or anything like that. Just take the points. At least then, if you take the points, your kicker has a little confidence. But you catch an L there, catch an L at North Carolina, and then you get you get a, a HBCU and Bethune-Cookman. They drop 63 on them. But that's not a good thing. I, I, I Normally, you think if you drop 63 on a team, you know, you're, the spirits are up again. Mm, not so fast. Um there were reports coming out of out of practices uh, that those players, those Miami Hurricane players, especially on defense, which is Manny Diaz's, uh, is that's Manny Diaz's specialty. Those players weren't taking practice all that serious. They were kind of they, they. That's why they got they almost got beat against Central Michigan this past weekend, where it, it just wasn't pretty. I, I get it, Central Michigan. They had two six seven tight ends. Yeah, I said it, two six seven tight ends. But my we're talking about practice, not a game, not a game. We're talking about practice. Thank you, thank you, AI. I, I, I say it over and over. You know, even after you're in a tight one against Central Michigan, where you win 17 to 12, Central Michigan should never, ever, even in Miami's darkest days, keep a game that close. Even after that wake up call you're still having issues in practice where Manny Diaz literally yesterday said he, in his post-practice press conference, he stopped practice because players weren't showing the same type of competitive competitiveness, the same fire that he, that meets their standard at the university of Miami. He literally just said that they were going to do a one minute drill and the losers have to deal with consequences. Typically we know what those type of things are running extra drills, uh, punishments, and to me, I, well, in Miami, I, I mean, that might be just taking their vehicles away for a week or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's just for for me, it's one of those things that I just don't understand. When you're at a big name university like this, this is an opportunity of a lifetime, and you, it's the you. It's not like it's it's Duke. It's not like it's South Carolina or something. It's the you. This this university hold this football team holds a different air about itself but it just doesn't seem like that that standard is there amongst the players and for me if I'm if I'm a even if I'm a young guy if I want to make it to the league and I'm seeing this type of effort being given somebody has to step up whether it's a young guy that just says look I'm tired of it or a senior or uh, some form of upperclassman that gets everybody together and say this is not what we do here but it just seems like the days of the Ed Reeds the uh, the Jonathan Vilma, the John Beeson, those days don't seem – it doesn't seem the same. And I, I was actually relying on 
I guess I'm relying on those senior three senior linebackers that have been there to take charge of that program, but it just doesn't seem like a lot of those things are happening. The season is say, still nothing a lot of seems the same when you're not winning. <laughs> None of that yeah, will ever seem the same. It doesn't. It doesn't. And I think they're trying to change the culture there, and I think they will, but you have to have a certain type of uh, of kid go there and make those changes and demand that, that change to happen. Uh, right now, Miami, again, is on a bye going into this week. So they have a, another week to clean things up before they go see rival Virginia Tech, and they get into the meat of the ACC uh, season where you have Virginia Tech and then Virginia in the next two weeks. Those two games will be very critical. Uh, Virginia Tech's not the same Virginia Tech, but Virginia is the class of, the, of, the, of at least the division uh, right now. And with you're already one game in the hole against North Carolina, losing to them. Uh, on the road, you just can't lose another one because if you do, you're. It, it's like an NFL season where you, the chances of going of actually getting to a division to winning this division uh, down 0-2 is very tough. You don't want to rely on another team having to lose or tiebreakers to get you through. Granted, your point, you may eventually have to face Clemson in the in an ACC title game, but do you really want to put it your hand put your Destiny in another team's hands at the end during a rivalry game. It's not something you want to do. Well, that is the state of the Canes. If anybody uh, listening is in our college football pick 'em group, uh, Fred's about to rapid fire through three of those games. So, you know, if you're on the fence about any of these picks, uh, listen to the analysis. See if you can uh, find any gems in there to help you make your decision. But we're going to start our Real quick, with the Ohio State versus Nebraska game, quick thoughts on that. Ohio State, Ohio State quarterback Justin Fields, the Georgia transfer, has been everything everyone expected him to be. Uh, he's been throwing it well, passing it well. Uh, they're averaging over 400 yards of offense. It doesn't seem like Urban Meyer's gone, does it? I mean, they've they've been doing everything. It just seems like another day in the office for them. Chase Young is the is the star on defense. I mean, if you thought. Nick Bosa was the guy. Wait till, if you haven't seen Ohio State play, go look at Chase Young. He's about six five, six six, like two fifty. He had nine sacks in three games. So let you you do you do your film analysis. I, I can tell you now he's a top five pick for me. Uh Nebraska quarterback Adrian Martinez is a good one. He's a nice dual threat quarterback, but this game is going to be uh, somewhat of a beatdown. I don't expect Nebraska to come through with this one at all. <laughs> all right. Virginia versus Notre Dame. This one's going to be interesting because Notre Dame just came off of a very physical, emotional loss to Georgia in which Georgia didn't really impress me much, but they, they just – it's one of those games. It's a war of attrition. At some point, somebody's just going to get tired of having to tackle somebody, and Notre Dame gave in. So now you're going to face a Virginia team who also lost, but they're steaming hot too. So you're going to have two teams where you're you're going who's going who's going whose will will break at some point. Uh, I look at Notre Dame and say to myself, they have to be able to run the ball better. Um, Star player to highlight in this game for me is Bryce Hall, uh, a the corner for Virginia. He is one of the best corners in this class. I I don't want to. I'm not going to call him elite level yet, but he is a bit of a ball hawk. He reminds me a little bit of uh, what Malcolm Jenkins was when he was in, in, in at Ohio State. A little bit corner, a little bit safety, but he is a ball hawk, and he can he can always return it for six. Um, I'm not calling a winner in this one, but this one, this Notre Dame needs this one big time to stay in the hunt if they want their national championship hopes to stay alive. All right, and last but not least, USC versus versus Washington. You know, we keep you know, it seems like I keep talking about former Georgia quarterbacks that have transferred. Jacob Eason was the guy that transferred out uh and Jake Fromm took his job. Well, he's now at at Washington and he is killing it. He has the he's the prototypical pocket passing quarterback, the old school type of gunslinger, six six, big arm, uh can throw it a mile, might not can hit the backside of a barn, but nonetheless, 
Uh, USC, on the other hand, they don't really have much of a quarterback. They're on their third string quarterback in Matt Fink after injuries have ravaged this team. Somehow, some way, they knocked off Utah a couple uh, last week, and I was very surprised. Uh, can they keep this up and save Clay Helton's job? I'm not all that sure. Uh, I think USC will be a formidable opponent. I don't think they'll be. An, it will be enough to stop a Washington team that is fundamentally sound. And when you have that on your team, it's very hard to stop. It's a Chris Peterson team. I rarely. There are very few coaches in, in college or the NFL that I'm willing to bet against. And Chris Peterson is a guy I don't bet against often. Uh, and, and Jacob Eason is Tony Eason's son, right? That I'm not I, sure. I, I'm, I'm not I, sure. I believe that's Tony Eason's son. See, Jim, Fred wouldn't know about that. Tony Eason was a Patriots quarterback before Fred was born. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Would, he, he wouldn't know before, about those before Patriots. He, yeah, <laughs> before he front, became a front runner. Yeah, back then. <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> yeah, look, I looked that up. I think he, I think he is related. I think that might be his son. Um, but Fred, as usual, man, you know we appreciate it. We look forward to uh, having your segment on. But good luck with the show. Um, when you get all the information, just let us know. And of course, you know we'll let all the listeners know where they can find you. But right now, let them know well, where they can yeah. find you on social media so they can talk some trash to you this weekend. Uh, about these pickums, the CFB. Uh, I won't be talking a ton of canes this weekend because we we have a bit of a buy. But you'll see, see me talking a lot of college football, and of course, I'm always available on Sundays. You know that team in New England. You know. <laughs> All right, and we'll I'll let you next week, man. All right, and by the way, go Packers. <laughs> Stop hating. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, man. Um. Before we start to get to our phone lines, man, we got some stuff that we need to talk about, man. Let's shift over to that other league we love, Jim. Let's talk a little NBA real quick because there's some news that came out of Boston uh, this week that's basically saying that there's here's, – here's the quote. According to a league source, the chance is pretty slim that Jalen Brown gets a long-term deal um, within the coming months. They said around the league, the expectation is that Brown and the Celtics won't come to a deal. Um, I was reading up on this, Jim. Um, Three players from Jalen Brown's 2016 draft class have already signed extensions prior to the expiration of the rookie contract. Um, That's Jamal Murray, Ben Simmons, who both got the four-year $170 million max. Um, And then Karis LeVert, who we know got extended by the Nets for three years, $52 million. Now, I hear what the issue is, is Jalen Brown thinks, and his team, his agent, whoever, and somebody who's gassing him, thinks that he's closer to the four-year $170 million max that Murray and Simmons got than he is to the $52 million deal that Karis LeVert got. I think Jalen Brown is a very good player. But I, I don't think Jalen Brown is like a, a star, um, the leader of a team, the leader of a franchise, or anybody that's going to come close to getting a max deal. What do you think? Do you think yeah. he's closer to think, that Ben Simmons, Jamal Murray? Or you think he's crazy? <laughs> it's funny because I don't think that he's a, a number one option, or I don't even think he's a number two option, um, especially within that current um, team and system. But I also right. feel like, Yo, you gotta shoot your shot, and I I know how the league is. There's somebody that's willing to pay him that. There's some team yeah. in the league that probably will be willing to pay him that. So you know, I I don't, I don't knock his hustle, but I I I'm on. I agree with exactly what you're saying in terms of your assessment of his game. But at the same time, if you gotta force your way out, there's somebody that's just willing to pay him that. Yeah, and and I heard that he doesn't use a traditional agent to represent him. Um, but I didn't hear any more details on, you know, they didn't elaborate on that. Like, what did he use? A lawyer, um, his brother, his uncle? Like, I don't understand. He's not using yeah, traditional we got agents. Rich Paul. I don't know what he's doing. Now, you, I, you know, most Rich people Paul. think that he, yeah, right, he will fall somewhere in like the $80, $90 million over four year range, like somewhere in the middle. Um, Cass Levert is a pretty good player, but. 
with the Nets, you know, the stuff that he was doing in the playoffs against the Sixers um, was pretty much a surprise to everybody. Now, Jalen Brown kind of got to prove his worth a little bit earlier when, you know, when Kyrie Irving and um, Gordon went down the year before and, and Jalen uh, Tatum and those guys got to lead the team um, to the Eastern Conference Finals. And that's probably what he's still banking on, even though the whole team pretty much imploded as far as their expectations went this past season. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think everybody pretty much took a step back from where the world and the masses thought they were, um, including Jason Tatum. Um, But somewhere maybe in the middle. Um, Yeah. I'm I'm sitting here, I'm trying to wrestle with myself, like, is he even that much greater than Karis LeVert to get like forty no, more I, million than him, but I'm like, no, I, as I <laughs> as it sits right now, and that's because the playoffs are so fresh in my head, and right. um, I don't know how many, I don't know how many times LeVert was Mister Too Damn Good for his team. Wow, don't even ask how. <laughs> but um, at, at the same at the same time though, man, like, y'all don't, don't understand. I, I have a hard time. Yeah, they don't they don't get that. They don't get them Gerald LeVert bars. But yo, I have a hard time wrapping my head around a new economy in the NBA, like. For for yeah. role and average players that have a hundred million dollar contracts, it's still difficult for my mind to be like. I remember when KG's contract was like the craziest thing in the world, and right. now you can like come off the bench and have a contract like that. Like <laughs> the new economy is, I, I still have a hard time wrapping my mind around a new economy. So, but you know why Jimmy playing like Jalen Brown think they can get, um, you know, max money because Andrew Wiggins got max max money. <laughs> They ain't looking at dude like, look, I can I can hold my I can yeah. hold with dude. I'm better than him. Um, but I think you know Minnesota. In the case of Andrew Wiggins, they are still living off his potential. It's not that he doesn't put up numbers because you know as much yeah. much flack as he takes, you know he averages twenty twenty two points a game. But it's it's it still like, like about as, Minnesota. Like everybody as talented as Minnesota he is, putting man. up. Cats be in Minnesota putting up meaningless numbers. That's where, that's where you go to, to get your numbers right. up. It's like you put up diesel numbers, but nobody respects it. Kevin Love, yeah. Andrew Wiggins. I mean, the last person yeah. who got respect probably was KG. And man. Yeah. And his ass didn't even want to leave there. I think everybody else like was ready to go. All right. So, yeah, you know, just wanted to, to bring that up real quick because that, that was interesting to me. Um, mostly because of how that playoff run two seasons ago has a lot of Celtics smelling themselves. Um, Tatum, I mean, it was, you can't just blame Tatum because everybody crowned him prior to this past season. Um, you heard Scary Terry and the way he was talking. Um, they, they really have been smelling themselves since that playoff run, um, but they didn't even duplicate it. So I guess everybody, look, we got to strike while – it's halfway still in people's minds. All right. Speaking of stock, LaMelo Ball stock seems to be rising. Um, after a pretty strong start in the Australian League, um, international scouts, um, along with some domestic NBA scouts, are now saying that it's possible that LaMelo Ball could end up being a top three pick, if not the number one pick and next year's NBA draft like that. He, he's come a long way from somebody who was taken out of high school, went to play overseas, couldn't get in college because of that. You know, dad has kind of been, I don't know, pulling him from one place to another, seemingly against his will. Like if you watch their reality show, it seems like Melo's still of that age where, you know, it's basically yes, dad, um, never going to say no dad, but are you surprised by this? Because a lot of people are looking at it um, as Lavar's going to feel vindicated if that's the situation. I don't really, I don't necessarily think that's the case. I don't think that anything he did. I mean, of course, like you got to give him his credit for making three very good basketball players, two very very good basketball players. Um, just I mean, all their lives. according to Lavar, I don't think his decisions played a part in this. I just think that Melo's a damn good player and. <laughs> yeah, listen, man. According to him, if if not for him, then no one would care about Lonzo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He'd um, be a regular old player. Be a regular old player, like you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying. So I, 
it's 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 crazy because every time I see the young boy, I feel like he's just like growing and growing. He's about to be like a seven foot point guard. But um, you know, he like he about to be like Kevin Durant size. Um, yo, and no disrespect to him, but there is no other player that I'm that I like that, that I'm hearing about this upcoming draft. When you talk about um, I don't want to say the minor leagues because we know they're all um, not they're not professionals. Uh, but when you talk about people that will be coming up to be eligible to play in the NBA, the only person's name we hear is um the angry boy Imani. It's like right. they skipped over <laughs> several classes. I don't know any of the hot prospects. Like I've heard names, but none of these names are are carrying like you know the next guy type uh, energy with them. Let's put it that way. So it's not really shocking to me. Like who who else Shoot. is there? Who who's number two? The, I think the two biggest names you hear in this draft are both of the kids that's playing over in Australia, uh, uh, Lamelo Ball and R.J. Hampton, um, who mm-hmm. both chose to to take that route. Um, I don't know. It's it's interesting to see because, like you said, it seems like every time you see Lamelo, he's added size, not just height, but size. I know before he played in the Drew League mm-hmm. out in L.A. He he put on ten pounds of muscle, um, played yeah. very well in that league. He just keeps showing up and, and and showing out, and a lot of people at this point thinks that he even has the potential to be better than uh, Lonzo. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's interesting to watch that because if he goes from, you know, basically off of the radar because of everywhere his dad was pulling him to number one or even a top three pick, oh man. LeVar going to be back in the building, uh, even though he and Lonzo are in a fight right now on whether or not they're going to get the big ball or bring back up and running. Um, kind of impossible to do without Lonzo at this point, but I guess if he holds out, he'll use Melo's money <laughs> to do what he has to do. Yeah. Um, All right. Casey Max said he went, Casey Max is the other name is Cole Anthony. And I've heard of Cole Anthony. I think, didn't he go to um, Carolina? If I'm not mistaken, but I don't hear any hype really around his name. I've never, I, I gotta know who he is. Like I know his name, but it's not a big hype around dude. Like, you know, yeah. I, if I'm not mistaken, he's like a small guard. Like I don't know, I don't know. Like I haven't heard any hype. Like I've heard hype around the, the young kid Imani Bates, where they're saying he's the next LeBron, or like I've heard that kind of hype. Same kind yeah, of hype that Ben Cole Simmons Anthony had. Is, ben Simmons um, is the next, like, Oak Hill, like you said, committed to Carolina, six three, one ninety. Yeah, but it, like you said, I mean, the names that you're saying, like we hear those names because their attributes make them special. You get a cat like yeah, the Mellow yeah. Ball who's six seven and still growing, um, point guard that can pass the ball the way he does. Now you know he can go to the hole the way he does. His bounce has improved crazy, um, and then you look at a guy like Armani Bates who's going to be damn near another player as well with his height and, and ball handling ability and shooting ability. Regular old 6'3", 190-pound guards really don't impress people anymore. <laughs> like, you're looking for freaks these days. And those other dudes are, you know, pretty much freaks. But we'll see. I mean, not to say that yeah. Cole Anthony is not a good player and won't be a good player, but, you know, you, you – Yeah. He'll, Only he'll be drafted man. by – whoever he falls to, but the teams are looking for the type of names that we just said because of their attributes and what they can do at their size. So the only, the only call, the only call I acknowledge is big Shirley's man. That's it. <laughs> right. But nah, if Melo go number one, boy, Var going to be like, can't nobody tell me nothing. Yo, he going <laughs> to do it. He going to make really his really run. Really he going to be on all the shoes. Right, because yeah, he, he his though. only he quotes, wait. his only quotes that you hear lately are because, you know, because he's basically been shut down by most of the media outlets. All of the quotes that you hear come from their show, so there's still a lot of reporters out there like Dag. Even though he's not out in the public like he used to be, I still want to know what's going on. So they watch the show and then they report on the show. So all of these quotes that we've heard oh. about him in the past few months have strictly been from their show. He used to that's say crazy that cause I, I, on I, TV because he used to get all the, the airtime. <laughs> that's crazy because I, I personally, like, stopped watching the show. That John got to be, like, I don't know, man. It's got to be 
this this week to me, man. Um, yeah, it, was, it's, it it lost power. <laughs> Y'all ain't ready, but um. Oh, oh, I saw what you did there. <laughs> All right, but um, one more thing, and then we're gonna take some phone calls, man. It's getting a little ridiculous in the NBA, uh, with the whole tampering fines and stuff like that. Now, peep this: the Milwaukee Bucks got fined fifty thousand dollars for publicly committing to offering a supermax contract to Giannis Antetokounmpo next summer. So basically, the Bucks general manager John Host was asked about his about Greek Freak's long-term contract out out look and he basically said, "Yeah, we're going to basically offer him the supermax extension a year from now." And he was fined. So, you know, it's one thing to tamper and talk about people on other teams, but you can't even talk about people on your own team yet who are currently under contract. You just can't you can't talk about their next contract. But like is there any secrets to the fact that the Bucks will be offering Giannis a Supermax? So it's like sometimes you got to Yo. use your better judgment if you're the rules committee. Like come on now. Like it's Common knowledge that they're going to offer him the supermax. They say it on TV or in an interview, and then get a fifty thousand dollar fine for talking about their own Yo, player. Boy, they got fined for saying water is wet. <laughs> like this, not even on some Magic Johnson type stuff. It's like with some of the stuff with Magic, you can kind of understand because you know yeah, we know what Magic was doing, on, you know, behind the scenes when he said mm-hmm. the stuff that he said. We know what he was really trying to do. But Big you can't move. say, I'm going to offer my our own player, who's already under contract with us, another contract in a year. That's tampering. Whew. Yeah, because I, and, and it's probably because like people are so pissed about previous fines. They're like pointing everything out to the office. Well, uh, according to the letter of the law, you know, lawyers have a tendency to ruin everything in life. Um, <clears throat> but this is quite ridiculous. Like, the test of what's reasonable and what's not reasonable is not used here. Like they, they, they basically said water is wet, and you wanted fifty k for it, so you took fifty. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. All right, so we're gonna go to the phone lines. We got Tobias holding on. This is actually great timing because we were about to talk about the debut of um, the guy who will forever, from this point on, be known as Danny Dimes. Um, Daniel Jones of the New York Giants made his debut against Damn, Tobias's Daniel. <laughs> Tampa Bay Buccaneers in a game that the Bucks should have actually won, but you know the Bucks have had kicking issues probably since Gramatica left, and you know the idiot kicker blew a pretty much a chip shot field goal that lost them the game and basically made Daniel Jones an instant New York legend. <laughs> Um, and we'll get into uh, his numbers in just a minute, but I definitely want to get Tobias on the line for this conversation. Tobias, what's going on, good brother? Roll damn time. Man, man what's going on, man? What's going on, fella? Roll time, baby. We got old Piss this weekend, a.k.a. Ole Miss. Uh, <laughs> take Alabama with the points. Take Washington with the points. By the way, also against Southern Cal. But uh, here's the thing. I hope you got that sensor buddy button ready right now. Uh, well, let me let me let me I'll let me let me, check, let me give let me give Danny Dimes stats against your Tampa Bay Buccaneers before you go in on your, on your team. He was 23 of 36 for 336 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, a passer rating of 112.7, and he also led the Giants. With 28 rushing yards on four carries, um, and I believe he scored a touchdown or two on the ground as well. Danny Dimes destroyed hey, him, man. He did lose two fumbles, which that. going into the game, everybody knew that that was an issue. His his ball security in the pocket is is, is pretty much trash. Um, he fumbles all the time. How did y'all lose this game? Well. I don't know which my favorite team got a worse kicker, Alabama or Tampa. Uh, neither <laughs> one of these teams can make kicks. <laughs> Alabama get five stars. Alabama don't need a kicker, got the, Hey, Alabama got the number one kicker two times in a row, and this clown still can't kick. But here's the thing. 
The GM lost his game and the coaching staff lost his game. One, the GM drafted like seven cornerbacks, none of them worth a damn. Uh, you got a bunch of short guys who can't run, and you got the guy Carlton Davis get like two pass interference calls every game because he's grabbing folks. Uh, it also, it's like, how in the hell you let a tight end burn you on 75 yards? Uh, and then the thing is also the coaching staff. What sense does it make? If you got uh, you got 13 seconds with one timeout on like a 10 yard line. Take a shot in the end zone, but you want to back it up on purpose because your kicker's better from distance. What the hell kind of kicker you got, Davey? Can't trust to a chip shot field goal. He also missed like two extra points, missed like two other field goals, and you want to trust this clown to win the game? It's just like look. Hey. I gotta ask you a question though. I gotta I gotta bring it up. It's not that I didn't agree with you because I actually agreed with you when you said it. But remember, everybody was saying, man, this is the perfect game to let Daniel Jones play because they're playing against the Buccaneers. And you pointed out, and I agree, like, well, the Buccaneers are actually playing pretty good defense. So people are just saying that because they're used to Tampa being a certain way in the last few years. But this is not by any stretch of the imagination going to be an easy game for Daniel Jones. How the hell did they let him be so successful, especially after losing Saquon Barkley? You know, hey, he should have been toast at that point. The he didn't have anything to lean on. Yeah, I know you watched the game, and like, and like, and like most national guys, that was the first Buck games they, that watched all year. They're probably the only one they're gonna watch <laughs> all year. But uh, <laughs> you know, but you saw a lot of the back of the defenders' jerseys in the front of them. Uh, when your cornerbacks get about as many tackles as your linebacker, that's a problem. These cornerbacks are so ass, they made Sterling Shepard look like he's on the second coming of the late, uh, Tory Holt. This was the team they said the receivers are garbage, and they made them look good. I just think that uh, – and Daniel Jones played a great game because he got the ball out, he made some good throws. But I'm like, people, when your offense is rolling that first half, why are you going to play not to lose and super conservative in the third quarter like you got the Bears defense? <laughs> you know, play to win the game. Get my Herman Edwards on here. Then you shut it down in the fourth quarter because, hey, it's a problem when the first play of the third quarter got hit a 75-yard touchdown pass. So yeah. I just think that this is like the coach is stupid. Both the coaching staff are stupid. <laughs> the GM drafting bad cornerbacks again. You probably draft three more again this year. You draft like three every year, and none of them any good. The guy can't beat Tom Brady in a foot race, and he keeps drafting slow corners. Uh, you know. But anyway, but hey, and on the other side of things, Jameis Winston had 380 yards passing. Uh, Mike Evans eight catches, 190 yards, and three touchdowns. So, at, at, you know. You can say a lot about Jameis usually on, 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 in other games and other weeks, but you can't put the blame on him for how the game ended up. Um, bottom line, yeah. the Bucks should have won this game. Jimmy, you got any thoughts on they Danny Dimes? I know people going to get mad. You Yo, keep calling me Danny Dimes. Listen, man. Danny same, Dimes. The same I, way you knew it was a good game to start, it was a good way to start Daniel, uh, Dan Daniel. Like, those Jameis numbers are inflated too, man. Let's like when is Tobias gonna really like be honest about Jameis Winston though? That's all I want to know. Watch the damn game. I watch the game. He watch the game. He put up two eighty in the first half with three touchdowns. How the hell is that? Yo, he played the Giants, B. Dude, he had a hundred twelve. You could have put up two eighty in the first half last week. Hold on, hold on. I'm not blaming him for the whole. I'm not. I'm not blaming him for the loss. I'm not blaming him for the loss. And um, the Panthers really haven't looked that great either. I'm not blaming him for the loss. They got a defense. About, you, have a got top 10 deep. you have a tendency to poop on every young quarterback. I, like, you poop on Jared every Goff young quarterback. Who? You know it. Jared Goff ain't all that. I said Patrick Holmes is great. I said Deshaun Watson is a good young quarterback. <laughs> he, he trying to, Baker Mayfield's he overrated. Talking about Jared Goff ain't all that, but still giving Jameis some rope. <laughs> yeah, Yo. but see, here's the thing. But, but see, Goff here's the thing. The what I'm saying is that but I've always said, if people actually watch the game and pay attention, it, it might need no brown boy. It's bigger than the quarterback. It's always the way bigger than the quarterback. But see, but, but see everybody makes yeah, that the easy excuse. 
if he got still got a bad defense, he still he, he still got a GM who who won't cut a guy who broke his neck and still hope he comes back in December. Don't don't ask me why. You got a guy who keeps dropping bad cornerbacks, keep drafting kickers, keep building a bad team. Okay, you put a new quarterback in there. The team still sucks. What now? Who are you going to blame next? That's always been my thing. Have I said the guy's been great? No. But how the hell can you say these hollow numbers? It's the NFL because that press guy put those numbers up. Everybody's like, oh, we look at that. It's just a guy that people don't like him. Now, I'm saying the guy's put up numbers his whole career. He throws a lot of picks. Yes. Deal with it. Cam Newton throws picks. Ben, ben throws picks. Phillip Rivers throws picks that he pays for when he loses big games. But what I'm saying is that if we go freak out every time a guy makes a near pick, hell, this is the NFL. People are going to throw picks. Daniel Jones Listen, throws man. twice. So, so hold you, on, so you want, hold you on, want, hold on, you hold want, hold on, hold on. Hold on, I'm going to say this. All I'm saying is, go ahead, go ahead. I will say Daniel Jones fumbled twice, but he won the game. And that is he when your team wins, people overlook it. The boy played a great game. Hell, Jimmy G, that dog had a lot of turnovers this year, but the team is 3-0. and oh. So if your team wins, nobody says any, it, it's a great mask. The guy played a great game. You can't take that away from him. All I'm saying is you want so you want your guy to be judged differently. You want your guy to be judged differently no, than anybody not. else in the history of the game. Like all those things you're complaining about, that's what it is. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. When you're the quarterback, that's the way it goes. Like tell that to Tony Romo. Tony Romo sat around and did everything, but he, you know he lost games and he was the worst quarterback in the league to some people. Like that's the way it is when you play quarterback. Hey, I tell you this, Jimmy. Baker Mayfield feeling it right up. now cause, because Baker Mayfield feeling it right now because I watched somebody show they say, "Why well, you don't have offense? He don't have this. He don't have this." I'm like, "Well, they giving him stuff." But so, and by the Listen, way, with man. him, they by, by the way with him, they have too many receivers. By the way, they shouldn't sign Odell, <laughs> you know. But Baker Mayfield that's, bring that's a lot of this on himself. Though. Baker Mayfield like to run but his see, mouth like he's but already but around. See, but see, you know what him? For example, he's another case. Bad organization. Kyler Murray, bad organization. Uh, the Jets ain't been the greatest organization with Sam Darnold. So a lot of these times, you are lucky. Pat, I always say Patrick Mahomes probably going to be the greatest talent ever in the position. But damn it, he got lucky, boy. <laughs> Instead of going to John well, He Fox. did, he did. That, listen, man, <laughs> how, but you know, like the funny thing is, man, historically you can say that about about a lot of people. You don't think that Montana benefited from playing with Bill Walsh? Bingo. You're damn right he did. Because but all I'm saying, all, all I'm saying is like that's just the way that's just the way it is. But the one thing I can say about Baker Mayfield, I don't he maybe he'll end up being the worst ever. But by him being an asshole the way he is, I see dude in so many damn commercials. He he's made he's made some he's made some money by like you know making himself more popular than his game indicates he should be. Yeah, and I know you guys got to run and stuff, but I've always because besides the Tony Dungy years, the Bucks have been pretty much a hot pile of garbage. <laughs> Except for the Tony Dungy year, but I'm glad you, you can know, admit whole, that. I'm glad you can admit that. Yeah, because you know, I mean, you, the fans of, uh, you know what? Because you know what? To be honest with you, it's, it's the same thing with your Chicago Bulls too. Like, you know, yeah. Other don't than worry. the Jordan no. years, they've been a hot pile of garbage. Hey, Jim, oh, no, I'm look, the Bulls gonna give Jalen Brown five years, 170 million dollars. That that'd be the dumb team that does it. But here's the thing: somebody gonna and do I'm it. All, Jimmy yeah. Bears fans still be acting <laughs> cocky over eighty five. I'm like, y'all got to let yeah. that go at some point. And, and, so, <laughs> and so the thing is, is that like, uh, you know, like Bucks fans, some of these groups, they want the quarterback gone already. And I was like, hey, you want to move on, cool. But I said, you got to, you got to be in good draft position to get a good QB because uh, two is going to the Dolphins. He's going number one. Have you even watched these other guys? Do you know anything about him, or he's just not that guy? But the, he still got to solve some of the other issues on the team, or he's going to be in the same boat as like Baker Mayfield. The, the organization's still a mess. Uh, by the way, Freddie Kitchens used to be a quarterback at Alabama 20 years ago. He was about as fat as Dan as he is now. But uh, but <laughs> we, we used to call a hot plate Freddie Kitchens. But uh, the thing is, if your organizational structure ain't good, you, you expect the 22-year-old to come in and change and save the day and stuff. And and I just think that where you go a lot of times, real and who who's who's over you really uh, helps out. And I just think that goes unstated, understated. All right, man. 
See what your team does, man. Let me see if Jameis keeps up putting up the good numbers. So you can have some justification and all of this oh, oh, leeway hey, that you've been hey, giving. <laughs> hey, Derek, I say this real quick, man. Be real quick. I watch these shows and they trying to crash your trash your boy went some of his fourth quarter stats and like win loss record. I'm like, well, Aguilar <laughs> dropped two games out of his hand. How is that the QB's <laughs> fault? This is why I, I mean, he's he's that quarterback. Mess. Yo, man. You, you know what though? He's but I've always quarterbacks, uh, quarterbacks and coaches, man. Quarterbacks I'll, and coaches. I've always I saw this week. that. Yeah. I always thought that fourth quarter comeback and game winning drive numbers were were pretty much trash. Like that's a trash stat to me because it's so it's it's they they leave it so wide open. I'm not even gonna say to interpretation because it's not wide open to interpretation. But like a fourth quarter comeback, if if the if you're driving and you get to the two yard line um, at the when the buzzer when the you know when the buzzer goes off for the end of the third quarter, you switch sides and you rush it in from, and you're behind going into the fourth, but you're at the two yard line. If you score on the very next play, on the first play of the fourth quarter and then nobody ever scores again, that's considered a fourth quarter comeback. That's considered a game winning drive. It's like those hey, numbers, listen, all it, it can be a real, it can be dramatic, it can be the last second and somebody drive you down and do it, but it can, it can also be some BS where somebody scores and takes the lead with t- 12 minutes left in the game and nobody scores from then on, that counts as those stats. So All hey. stats are trash <laughs> other than the score of the game. All stats are trash. All stats are hey. 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 good. E- hey, you guys have a good evening. And remember, mm-hmm. if a quarterback makes an interception for you to win a Super Bowl, that means you're the greatest quarterback of all time, even though you did not pick that ball off. You guys have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, shout out I mean, that's fine. He's still taking shots at Brady, but taking up for uh for um James hey, listen, man. Shout out to yeah. shout out to Brett Favre. That's the way the game is, man. Like my whole thing is, I'm not disagreeing with what he's saying, but that's just what it is, man. Yo, Brett Favre. Yo, he had a Super Bowl where he won, but the the MVP was the kick returner because Brett Favre really ain't doing but, nothing. Reggie White was out no, there I, throwing I, people around. I feel him though, Jim, because I probably you know me. Uh, you know my history. I probably took up for. I probably defended Kevin Cobb for a little, little too long, and I, I definitely defended um, Nick Foles for a long time. Cause you remember, ain't, ain't nobody in Philly except for me and B. Austin like Nick Foles before the Super Bowl, <laughs> and we thought he got a raw deal the first time before he left for the Rams. And everybody hated Nick Foles. Now he's everybody's hero, and everybody act like they knew it all along. So. Well, because what they always say, they say they, winning, winning is the best deodorant, man. That's all it really takes, man. Like, mm-hmm. but but that's just the way it is. My whole thing. You know is, what? I'm glad though. Now, I'm glad now, that now, now, now there's somebody you like. In the past ten years, is documented on, on audio. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, now that there's somebody you like, you want the, the rules to change, man. The rules have been the same forever, man. Like, <laughs> yo, this is this is playing quarterback is not easy, but that's why they make the money they make. Because you got to put up with all that BS. A quarterbacks and coaches. I saw people on the timeline this week, several of them, calling calling for uh, Doug Peterson's job. My man just want to bowl to you for less. Like, but that's, that's the but thing, man. Look, look, society, at, look at his record since the bowl. Look at his record since seen, the bowl. He's like below 500. Like, have you, have you, which, which ain't even true, but have you seen um, um, Giants fans this week? Oh, my God. I, oh, yeah, yeah. Big adamant. Yeah, I, Somebody said that by this time next year, Daniel Jones is going to be the best quarterback in the NFC East. He played one game. Y'all booed this man. Yo, they he got drafted because y'all didn't want him. He played one game, listen, and now he's going to be the best quarterback in the NFC East next year. This is the world we live in. Listen, man, it's it's, it's moment to it's moment to moment. We live in a we live in an era with with everything where everything changes. Like we change history based upon. What, what happened recently? Like we don't care about anything. Yeah. Like there's no context. It's just like you have a great game this week. You're the greatest ever. And if you suck the next week, then yo, you're the worst ever. That's just what is it is. From a, this is coming from a Daniel Jones defender. I defended dude since draft night because I just didn't like how people threw a, threw dirt on his name and they knew nothing about him. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, people had never watched a Duke game in their life. And everybody yeah, that's talking why about they did it. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's why they did it. They didn't know him. That was the thing, right, like, yo, who gets the ball? Right. And now, you know, he's going to be the best quarterback in the division 
by the start of next season. Let's go to the phone line one more time before we move on. We got the homie Nodge calling in from down in Georgia. Nodge, what's going on? Hey, hey. Danny Dimes in the house. What's up, King? Yeah, Danny Dimes, man. man. Best quarterback in the NFC East. Early. Hey, man, y'all got y'all to gotta be nice to fans, man. Understand, uh, man. we are possibly the dumbest population in the history of uh, the world. So yes, that's going to reflect in the fan base. So, I mean, we just got to we, we gotta wear that, bro. We're part of that. It's all good. I mean, it's well, good. fan is short for fanatic, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and, and the Danny Dimes stuff is crazy as hell just because it's like, okay, that Tampa Bay defense is not just bad. Like, it's all-time bad. Not from the standpoint, like, I, I hear what he was saying because he's a fan of the team saying corners are slow and all of that. Well, you can compete with slower corners. The issue is they have a lack of communication and no idea about what they're playing from play to play. So it's just defensive breakdowns and people running free all throughout the game. Evan Ingram's a 4-3 guy playing tight end. So, you know what? You kind of got to be physical with every Ingram. You can't let him have free release. Right. And just let him get off the line. Because <laughs> he's not Ty blocking. So <laughs> Old Ty Bowles no better. Then they're playing man-to-man against this kid who's two and two reads and then running, and they're playing man-to-man, which is giving him running opportunity. So, it is what it is. But we'll see. We'll get a correction on this. We saw a ceiling game from the kid. That's nice. We know his speed translates to the NFL, but going to be some bad days ahead, believe that. Yeah, I mean, but the, the coaches, I guess, you know, because I was a little, I, I really didn't understand the timing of it at first, but that was because I was looking at it probably from more of an Eli Manning perspective. But then again, if you look at it from a, a Daniel Jones perspective and coaches think that the team is just like, look, we don't really have a shot. We need to get them in there to get some, you know, just get some experience. It probably was the, a good spot. You put them in there against Tampa the very next week they got Washington. So before they, the schedule does get a little difficult and daunting, he gets up a little bit of confidence before he goes out there and, and finds well, he out also, what the NFL is really also, about. Yeah, well, Eli was put in there from up on high. The coach didn't want him in there. He can't run his full playbook with him in there. He know the guy can't push the ball down the field. He didn't want no parts of Eli. That was forced upon him. So after two games, I guess, because he realized, like, yo, my career is going to go down in flames. I'm never going to get a head coaching job because of this old dude who they're calling the legend here who should have retired three years ago. So, I mean, he did all he could and got the man up out the paint. Luckily, you know what I mean, luckily for, for uh, everybody, really, because we shouldn't have to watch Eli Manning play football in 2019. Like, that's terrible. Now, <laughs> as far as Jameis, like, it, it's, it's bad to judge quarterbacks on just outcomes and just saying, TDs, interceptions. The thing to do is watch process. How does this guy go through his read? What does he consider open? Uh, how does he attack certain defense? Like, those are the things to look at. And when you look at that and you spent the first, you know, number one pick overall on Jameis, you didn't get what you paid for. Uh, but right. since Jason Light was the GM who, who picked him, he's going to stick with Jameis as long as he can because the moment he gets rid of Jameis, they're like, okay, you got to get out of here too. So he's giving Jameis his one last stand this year, and Jameis has to prove himself to be a starter. And if he struggles, you know how I go for brothers, man. He holding the clipboard forever after this. Right. So he, Jameis has the ball, man. We're going to see. Uh, but, but that's what has always been with Jameis is bad. the consistency thing. Because Jameis has well, games where you're like, damn, this dude can play. And then he has games you're like, well, what the hell is he doing? So it's like if he could ever get consistent and we're – you know, he's been in the league long enough at this point to where if, if we're still saying if and if he can ever get, uh, it might not be too positive for the situation. Well, think about you know, Eli, Eli, used to have, Eli used to have games like that where from drive to drive, he would go from looking like the best quarterback you ever seen to the worst quarterback you ever seen. <laughs> the third best quarterback in his family, and people telling him he, he should be in the Hall of Fame. But anyway, but, but back to Jameis. Damn. Oh. Think Cooper. about this. Well, I'm just saying. Oh, well, I'm, just, I'm talking about his dad. Cooper was wide receiver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, right. right. Stop. Coop, Cooper got an accounting firm. He's <laughs> getting that break. <laughs> Jimmy's like, Cooper wasn't even that good of a wide receiver. But, no. Nah. 
Yeah, he might have, he might have a, 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 a couple of times. Who knows, man? Backyard. He might be able to pitch it, pitch it a little better than your boy, uh, who I call old stank face. But but going back to Jameis, dude, like, just think about Bruce Arians saying, basically, we got this lead. Second half, he starts running the ball with Ronald Jones and Barber because he wants to tick out the clock. He's scared bad Jameis is going to show up. And at the end of the game, when he didn't, you know, take the shots that he should have because he relied on the field goal, it's because he doesn't trust Jameis. Like, mm-hmm. if you got a franchise quarterback, but you're operating as if you can't trust him, what is that saying? So, no, I'm not a big big Jameis guy, man. This is his shot, though. I mean, he's got the whole season to prove, you know, whether he's, he's a guy or not. I think more than likely he implodes because that's what he does. But, you know, we'll see. It's going to be an interesting week this week, man, because we we got a lot of teams who've beaten up on cupcakes. Uh, shout out to the Patriots beating up on the AFC least. Like Buffalo's three and up. Does anybody believe in that? No, you know no, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I saw them. Shout out, shout out to the guy, Black uh, <laughs> Black Josh. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> he made I mean, their defense is there, real. But, their defense is definitely yeah, yeah. real, but. You know, I, I'm I'm watching some stuff on the Eagles, and they're talking about how you know it's a must win because their schedule coming up, and they started naming people, and then they named the Bills. I'm like, huh? I'm like, all right, all right I forgot they're three and zero, but come on, they're the Bills. Yo, yo, the Eagles are the best test case of just straight. All you can say is, man, it's just football. So the Eagles have a good D line; they can stop the run, but they're not good enough as far as pass pressure to I make up for the terrible secondary. Yeah. And the secondary is just getting eaten alive. And Schwartz is like, well, hell, I'm just going to send the dogs because I know these dudes <laughs> can't cover. So you can't knock them for doing it because what else the hell you do? And then on right. the offensive side, Carson Wentz is performing, but now he's dealing with secondary guys playing and, you know, Nelson Aguilar. You know, I mean, come on, man. You can't expect that much from Nelson. Like, right. so and and you're, you're in a position right now where you have to force the ball to Nelson Aguilar because – he was the only receiver besides your tight end who had more than 20 receptions in his NFL career. So he's your guy now. And, of course, and the thing, if you're forcing the ball to him, yeah, you're going to get two habit. touchdowns in the game, but you're also dropping important passes and fumbling the ball. So, yeah, he, he's in, the words of Hakeem Law, in the words of the legend Hakeem Law, he had too many mishaps. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and you finally broke Wentz of his bad habit of staring down Ertz and trying to just direct everything to Ertz. He's now spreading and attacking the whole field. But and now he probably you know, needs to stare down Ertz. He probably Man, needs to look, stare down Ertz and just throw it to Ertz. I think I wouldn't if I was him. But then Howie <laughs> Rosen makes the mistake of saying running backs don't matter, and you got uh, 75-year-old Darren Sproles out there getting 30 snaps, and it's like, okay, why the hell is Sproles on the roster and why is he getting so many snaps? Then the young boy who looks good receiving and running, but he keeps fumbling. Like, he fumbles as well. It's just it's everybody got a weird who has a positive has a negative. You know what I mean? Like, right. <laughs> I've seen Corey yeah. Clement or somebody on the roster again. I said, what the? Why does this dude like these average running backs so much? He, he just finds <laughs> these. Who can I pay And then the dude who's we'll getting get positive there. yardage every time he touches the ball can't get the ball. He don't want to give Howard the ball because they fell in love with the rookie. So. I don't know, man. This is this is. Hey, man. When you when you watch Howard, you say he gets what he gets what's blocked. But then you see those plays where there's much more there, and he just can't get there. I think. Oh yeah, he's not. Coaches off. He's not a vision guy. He's just gonna he's just gonna get a few yards after contact. But if if and they do open up a, a hole the size of a truck, he's not gonna go through it. He's gonna try to truck somebody. <laughs> that... <laughs> and he's gonna yeah, get caught. He ain't running away from nobody. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, man, it, y'all got an interesting season. But y'all better than us, hell. The Falcons are doomed. Hopefully this will be the final straw, and I can get Matt Ryan the hell out of town. I hate that man. He's been lying to people for all these years. He's a fake uh, all-pro quarterback, <laughs> a con man, and a Julio Jones benefactor. And I can't wait till we run him, at, run him out of town, man. I can't <laughs> wait. And all y'all teams who want Matt Ryan, send us two first. Please, please trade us and take Matt Ryan. Please do. I can't wait for somebody to fall for that. Somebody will. Somebody, somebody will fall for it. Oh uh, yeah, QB. But right, well, yeah, man, y'all be easy. All right, you too. Yep. <laughs> Take I it went in on, uh, on Matt Ryan. All right, so um, 
Let's see what we got here. What else is happening around the world of sports? Let's give, um, well, before we go to the quote of the week, your man, Antonio Brown, he's been in um, draw daddy mode all week. Um, of course, everybody knows by now he was released by the New England Patriots. Um, it wasn't necessarily because of the chart, you know, the accusations that had popped up, even though after he signed with those guys, two accusations of sexual misconduct uh, came down the pike. It wasn't necessarily because of that, because the NFL was going to do their due diligence since there wasn't any um, criminal charges being pressed. The problem was he was threatening one of the women by text message. That was kind of the last straw for the New England Patriots because he was threatening one of the uh, accusers via text message when he should have just been leaving that whole situation alone and, you know, letting his lawyers handle it. Um, But since then, since he's been released, he's decided that he's quitting football uh, later on in the week. um, His agent came out and said that, well, that's not actually true. And he's gotten some, some, some contact from some teams and AB didn't really want to quit. Uh, He probably had to talk him out of that because he saw his commission on the line, uh, Drew Rosenhaus I'm talking about. Um, But in between that, he went on a Twitter rampage where he was calling out other people who had some sexual mishaps. He called out the owner of the Patriots, um, Kraft, about his exploits at the massage parlors and saying, you know, with him, he gets a slap on the wrist, but I get fired. Um, He brought up uh, ben Roethlisberger, he said, Ben, you know, he, he gets this and I get fired. And he's been accused two or three times. Um, then he talked about Shannon Sharp because Shannon Sharp doing his job had some things to say about AB. AB doesn't like, he didn't like Shannon and the stuff that he was saying. So he dug up an accusation that Shannon Sharp had, a sexual assault accusation. So he was putting everybody from the NFL on blast that he could find, um, I guess, to make himself look. I don't know what the, I don't know what the purpose of it was, but um, yo, what were your thoughts? But you, you missed, saw? you missed out, you missed out on today's rant. Like over the last two hours, he's going oh, on man. on Twitter on a rampage again. He um, he like went in on Eric Weddle, um, posted up pictures of him stiff arming Eric Weddle, um, told Eric Weddle, <laughs> "Don't call me AB. That's my NFL name, and I'm not your team, Jer- I'm not, I've never been on your team, Jabroni." Yo, how your name A B? You say yo, don't call me A B. That's my NFL. Why are you name, mad bro? at everybody though? Why are you mad at everybody? Yo, of something you did. He had posted a tweet earlier that said, "Um, like, what do you say? The game need me." I'm like, like B Austin. Uh, <laughs> B Austin there? Yeah. Yeah. Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm here for I'm here for the A B slander, man. I'm I'm here for yo, it. Yo, A B. He basically put up a tweet that said, "The game need me." I'm like test answers. First off, like, um, that's a trash bar. I think it's a little Wayne bar, but it's a trash bar. But people didn't, you know, most people are culturally clues don't, don't understand that's a brat bar. So they thought he was saying the NFL needs him. So you got a bunch of players saying that nobody needs you. And um, he just started, like, slandering them. He started slandering Nike, um, started slandering oh, players. Yeah, he's just going to yeah, burn every um, bridge that there is um, to burn. And while he's saying this stuff and acting like he doesn't care, his agent is trying to do damage control and say that he does want to play in the NFL. Everybody, all the talking heads are asking, like, well, if he ever gets another shot, who's it going to be with? And they're naming teams. But I don't know. I think we might have seen the last Antonio. Oh, by the way, uh, shout out to to the friend of the show, Robert Klemko, because he's still cooking him too. Oh, yeah, because Robert Klemko was the one who – um, he's the one who reported on the second woman, I believe. So yeah, I don't know. Like, there's a part of me that wants to cook his dumbass, but there's there's a level that also wants to examine the mental health per- perspective, right? Something is obviously wrong with my man emotionally and mentally, um, because outside of that, I'm, 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 
<laughs> I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted by his lack of personal accountability. Like he literally blames everyone for everything other than himself. The level of yes men that are around him, yo, dog, you all realize his yes men, his yes men made Trump Floyd Mayweather. Like he may have more yes men around him than. Yeah, Floyd. I don't know about that. That, that that's a tough one, dog. But he he he. But he has to have a lot because the whole time I'm reading, I'm like, yo, nobody took his phone, nobody schooled him. Like he's playing this all wrong for 2019. That's another thing. In 2019, you could have just fell back for a couple months, and people would have like forgave you for like. True, people would have started marching for you. They would have started marching for exactly. you in a couple months. Jay, the play, if you would have exactly. kept quiet, you would have turned into the victim. <laughs> Listen, man, people don't understand that, like, sometimes, like, not saying anything is an action in itself, and I hope that don't go over your heads, but he could have just shut up, and, like, that's all you got, yo, in 2019, all you got to do is fall back for the people for, like, people are willing to give second, third, fourth chances, but you got to, like, lay low. Yeah. All right, man, but A.B., Going down that rabbit hole, he's just going farther and farther down it. All right, clearly so he's 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 still. On, by the way, by the way, people out there, he's still on Twitter right now, going off like this. It's funny because we're talking about this from like stuff from earlier in the week, but as we're having this conversation, he's on Twitter acting stupid. He's letting his hand go. Scabby said, "I ain't gonna lie, the Raiders need him." Damn Mayock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, He'd have turned just he'd have turned everything inside out at some point. Quote of the week. I don't watch baseball. I just love to play it though. But it's boring watching it. White Sox <laughs> shortstop Tim Anderson. So this is coming from a professional baseball player. Do y'all see any lies in Listen, man. Yeah, in the words in the words in the words of the old head in the words of the old head from coming to America, man, he ain't lying. He ain't lying. <laughs> Um, quote. Coming from a baseball lover, but I, I, admittedly, you know, I, I'd, I'd rather be at a game than watching one on TV. But you know, I, I I don't mind watching or even listening to a good baseball game. But admittedly, like if there's if there's something else on, like a good basketball game or a football game, I'd watch that before I watch the baseball game. But this is funny coming from somebody who plays the game for a living. And a a lot of people feel this way about this. I know people who are great basketball players and don't watch a lick of basketball. Like, this happens, you know, in every sport. But it's crazy when you actually hear somebody admit it publicly because I'm like, okay. I know they're thinking, like, yo, you got to be quiet. You're not being a great ambassador or endorser of the game. But also, at the same time, for all me, of these people, um, TV contracts are already set in stone, so he's really not hurting anybody by saying. Yo, that. for me, <laughs> and I've said this several, I've said this several times in our platform. Just being honest, like baseball, is hard for me to watch on TV. It's just not a TV sport. I love baseball games a lot, and it's funny because I actually feel the opposite about football. Like to me, so football is a better team. Sometimes it'd be too hot out. Yo. Yeah, but football football is a better TV sport than live sport. Like live, I hate yo. I actually don't like live NFL. Live football, football. Um, <laughs> like I like, I like I NFL on TV. Go to TV. games every year, but like I will, I, like I will NFL never. Games on TV. Be the baseball. I'm game. the only basketball. Coach. I guess I'm I'm the I'm the only lush there to partake in debauchery. So going to live sports to me is about being drunk in an accepting environment. Um, so I'm oh, there okay. for the liquor. Gotcha. Okay. I ain't gonna front though. Jimmy's definitely right because football I want to... is the type of game where you're gonna come home and, and and find out a bunch of stuff happened at a game that you saw every play of. It's just difficult yo, to, that, to, yo, to yo, know what's going on that's when you're at the thing. game. <laughs> that's the realest thing you ever wrote. They be like, "Yo, look like, how cool he had this and that happened." Yeah, hundred yards like, What happened? I like, didn't know that. <laughs> yo, yo, that's the realest thing you ever wrote. Yo, the, the crazy part is a couple of years ago. I went to a, a hockey game for the first time just for for cultural purposes and you know for the experience. That's definitely a lot. And that's all yo, that John was that John was lit. I ain't gonna hold you like, <laughs> like it's, 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 yo, it's a it's a cult sport, but they be into it like, and I mean maybe it's because it was a Flyers game. Like yo, 
I was like, yo, the energy in here is something different. Yeah, yeah it, it is. is. It is. My first the level ever of hockey alcohol game. consumption was also at a different level. Right. My my first ever hockey game was in Denver. The Colorado Avalanche was playing somebody. So it was a little bit different because they, you know, those fans aren't as crazy as fans would be at a Flyers game. And there were barely any rumbles on the ice. So it was like, you know, that's what I'm here for. Like, what are y'all doing? Anytime oh, I flip past a hockey game on TV, I came for the hand work. I'm scrapping. Like, yeah, I came to see somebody drop the glove. Okay, I did they have they were all nice to each other. Like, anyway, did they have Patrick Wah? And plus, everybody out there probably was high anyway. Right. Well, this was, <laughs> this wasn't this wasn't this week, Jim. This was uh, some years back. Oh, okay. so it was before all of that. I mean, that don't mean they weren't high already, but because if you're if you're one of the first states to make it legal, that means they were getting down crazy anyway. If you felt oh, the need, yo. So, but <laughs> all I'm saying is to all to all our listeners in Denver, yo, I got a speaking gig out there like March or April, yo. Get them edibles ready. Bless uh-huh. you. I got I got a rec- I got a place for you. Black owned, Bless black owned women. So you got to support. Oh, oh, say less. Say less. <laughs> it's for it's for, women. it's for the culture. It's for black. It's, a, it's for supporting black business. That's the only reason. Only oh. reason. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the only reason I was high a couple of weeks ago because I was supporting black business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the only reason I was high. I mean, that's legit yeah. though, because y'all know I don't get high, but I was. Being, I uh, me and Mr. Smoke, <laughs> me and Mr. Smoke's been trying to get Dev there for years. I guess it had to yeah, happen in edible. I, I can't. Yeah, it definitely does. I because any any Yo, type of smoke, way. barbecue grill, cigarette. <laughs> Cigar, weed, yo, everything makes I, my head hurt. Yo, I'm, I'm reading a message we got from Casey Mack, and this is shocking. Remember, Casey Mack was the baseball guy. He mm-hmm. said, uh, Peter Alonzo has 51 homers as a rookie, and I can't tell you what number he wears or if he's left or right handed. He missed out <laughs> like, all this. <laughs> because, because Casey Mack used to write for the War Room about baseball. <laughs> he used to write <laughs> articles for us about baseball. Yo, yo everybody's working up on baseball. I baseball on board Casey Mack to death. He used to be a sports writer <laughs> about baseball. Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> All right, stat of the week. Um, Washington State University quarterback Anthony Gordon goes 41 for 61, 570 yards, nine passing touchdowns, and a 67 to 63 loss to UCLA. UCLA came back. I forgot how many they were down. You put up 63 points. You throw nine touchdowns. You throw for 100, I mean, 570 yards. You throw 61 times with 41 completions, and you lose the game. Listen, it's only, it's only a couple people that will it's only, it's only feel this way. I'm, uh, you may. Yo, if I am the – Offense of the winning team, i.e. UCLA. Yo, my defense got to give me a rumble, yo. They got to give me a rumble. If I'm the offense of either one of those teams, defense got to give us a rumble. Especially Washington State. Here's the truth, though. He's a college kid. You put up 63. He's a college kid, right? Offensive line got to, you know, lead the charge when we go into the locker room because the defense getting beat up. Here's the thing, though. (laughs) All day. So here's the thing. It, it, it's, these are college kids. So first off, they're gonna have the uh, the Donovan McNabb reaction where they say, yeah, "I did my part." So you know, I ain't doing <laughs> this. You know, you got to talk. But <laughs> and even though, even though Donovan said that as like an eight year pro, but that's either here or there. Um, this is also one of them joints where they low key like excited about their numbers. They're not gonna act like it, but they're gonna act like the loss really hurt them. But they really don't care. Um, oh, yeah. I'm like I'm in the Heisman race now. <laughs> yeah, and the third thing is, if the defense wasn't that ass, you wouldn't have had the numbers anyway. You only got the numbers because y'all was in the shootout. So True. It low key helps you, you have numbers to keep up. going back out there and putting up numbers to keep y'all in it. But that's yeah. but that's yo, Jimmy, that's that that point. logic only works for the QB, for the QB and the receivers. All the other dudes was tired by then, man. Fat boys didn't want to be oh, yeah. out there for that. Running backs didn't want to I mean, be out there because listen. The running back wasn't getting, getting the rock. He was in blitz, yeah, he he was in blitz up and pass protection the whole time. So he got he a concussion. <laughs> the running yeah, back he, got, he got CPE. 
Yeah, he got CD. You're right. That is that's definitely a quarterback perspective, but it makes sense. All right, so um, yeah, real quick, y'all can check out our website at worldsports.com. Take your time, browse, look around. General inquiries, just hit us on the email info at worldsports.com. If you want to get into the conversation tonight, join us on the JW Philly Realty chat room. It's at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room. Just sign up for a free profile on Blog Talk Radio if you don't want to do that. You can sign into your Facebook and Twitter account. If you want to call in and speak with us, uh, we'll be taking calls in a few minutes on the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline. That number is 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted, but if you're already listening from your phone, just press 1. If you want to talk, um, Jimmy, it's, it's on you, man. Without you know, these grind yes, topics, you know, yes, be sir. always pick the ones you want, skip the ones you don't want. <laughs> no doubt, it's time to talk about the things that happened this past week while you were on the grind, which is brought to you by Sports the Book. Bottom line, greatest sports book ever written. You can get it one of two places: sportsthebook.com or warmingsports.com. It's a it's a mix of hip hop and sports culture. You got to check it out, man. It's, it's, it's very amazing, places. but again, that's sports they book. They, they can get the one I left at their mama house. Ah! Like, <laughs> oh, that was dead, by the way. That wasn't me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, um, sportsthebook.com or wolverhamsports.com because you know what I mean? She can't no baby out of mouth. Yo, um, what happened while you were on the ground? It's, it's, time, it's time that we, uh, you know, give this Philadelphia legend his just due. Greatest bar ever. The brother Hakeem. The brother Hakeem uh, Law. <laughs> Yo, shout out to Kiss out there too, man. J- Jada Kiss out there, like you know, must be needing some bread because he went beyond doing features for the low. Now he's doing shout outs for the low. So salute to him. Yo, anyway, um, Jada Kiss will probably do. Jada Kiss will probably do our theme song for like seventeen dollars. Like real talk, we, might, we gotta make that happen. We just ask him. Oh, oh, oh. Yo, yo. Yo, 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 wait, wait. Yo, how you top five, dead or alive, but you ain't got no pride or dignity for a dollar? <laughs> yo, my man he is, he is, he yo, is, he is not boy. turning down any bad. He it'll, turn probably down be easier. Jim, it'll probably be easier if I say, yeah, I'm going to do this theme song. I need you to collab with me, like do a verse with me. He'll rap with me because he rap with them Southern boys. I can rap better than half them dudes. Yo, all I, all I know is he put kid. his kid. His kid just graduated from Clark Atlanta, and, and I, you know, I heard him posting about paying for it. So he must really be out there, you know, paying for that tuition. So shout out to Jada Kiss, man, for doing shout outs for his kid's college tuition. But anyway, man, it's time to get back to this Philadelphia hero, man, Hakeem Laws, man. Um, hey, Jim, I'm sorry. I know we keep cutting Delphi. you off, but can I tell you how much, like, I'm tired of throughout the years, whenever there's a primetime game in Green Bay, all they do for hours leading up to the game is show cheese factories? Like, come on, man. I mean, I know people, about, people are probably also, they probably equally as irritated when there's a primetime game in Philly. They go somewhere and show people cooking cheesesteaks. But that I'd rather see somebody yeah. cook a cheesesteak than them putting big round mounds oh. of cheese into some water. And like, where, where oh, are we next, time, next, time they, next time they do a game in Philly, instead of showing the Liberty Bell, they should come down to Kensington and show Needle Park. Um, I was about yeah. that the other day. And I, it was the, sure the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Ooh. Yeah. Anyway, so um, everybody down there doing the Annie, are you okay? All right. What's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> you? What are you talking about? Uh, what's, so who is Mike you care about what she's about. doing? Though? What was Mike talking about? Yo. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about Hakeem Laws, man. He's a Philadelphia hero, man. He was saving people from a burning building. And in the middle of doing so, he still felt Literally. he still, you know, as a Philadelphian, felt it was necessary to take a shot at Nelson Aguilar on a live interview. It you was necessary. Saying? Yo, made himself famous. He's now on the internet, like basically selling a T-shirt with his face on it that says hashtag like something about Nelson Aguilar. And here's the crazy part: all the money he's making from the T-shirts, he's donating to the um the victims of that fire. So he he found a way to make himself Yo, a hero again. I love him. Eating that bull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but it was crazy because he went mad viral. But the first, I remember my first time seeing it. I actually like died three times and came back. Um, I was like so cool. The fire 
fire trucks coming down the street, they was like in the far off distance and everything like that. Smoke started getting worse. Then I seen a guy hanging out the window, you know, screaming at his kids was it and things like that. So I, I ran to the back door, see if it was open and it was. I ran upstairs, but then I was greeted with smoke. I ran back downstairs. By that time, the ladder truck was pulling up. And ironically, then my, one of my ex, my old co-workers took the ladder off the, off the truck, raised it up, and it was sent people down. My man was throwing babies out the window. So we was catching them, unlike Aguilar and his mishaps. I like to put that out there. <laughs> Yo! How are you telling a true story about y'all catching babies out of a burning building and you found time to take a shot at a receiver oh. who's been dropping past it? First of all, and he, and he doubled down too, Jim, because every time he gets interviewed now, he's still killing him. Yo, shout Yo, out to Aguilar, our home Aguilar, Aguilar, played, Aguilar played it right, though. He played it right, but you just got to take the cooking. You just got to, you know, get, Aguilar was like, Yo, the Bulls are here. I want to invite him to a game. Like, I, he had to play it that way. Right. Yo, but that's he the thing. Had, Even after was, Aguilar told people to get in touch with him so he can invite him to a home game, he was still cooking him. He was like, Yeah, you know, he, he even demonstrated. Did you see the interview where he actually had a football in his hand and he demonstrated yes, how he yes, was catching the baby? Yes, I did. you, man. Hero. Yo, he was still cooking. He's going to come to the game and Hero. watch him drop past his lives. Hero. I got a, I got a, I got a couple, uh, I got a couple questions for y'all. In y'all, in y'all's prime, do y'all drop that pass? You talking about the one against nah. Atlanta or one last week? One against Atlanta. Which one? I'm talking yeah. Atlanta. Which one? I'm talking uh, Atlanta. Against Atlanta? I mean, no way. You was uh, two yards away from the line of scrimmage. It wasn't that far of a pass. I mean, dude just saw the end zone before he saw the ball. Yo. I don't know. You talking about near prime? I'm going to drop that pass now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm assuming that we don't get off. I'm assuming we don't beat the corner off the jam. Off the line, oh, yeah, yeah. but yeah, I'm not dropping it. I ain't dropping that. Yeah, no, I'm, no, I'm not. not you asked, though. Yeah, that wasn't that's your question. You <laughs> right, right. Because right, if that's the case, right. I'm never going to be able to drop a pass because I'm not going to ever be open for one. But <laughs> we got that. We got that established. Where does he? Where does Nelson rank in? Uh, you know, in 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 our lore, like where where is he? Burnt toast. Uh, Dimitri Patterson, uh, Bradley I know, Fletcher. I, I feel you. Mm-hmm. But where you go, and the crazy part is, like after, you know, maybe a season, and a half, maybe two seasons of being a bust compared to where they drafted him. You know, in 20, 2017, he was pretty good. Um, he he had a few mishaps last season. He was still pretty good. Shoot, after the catch, when he actually catches it, dude is kind of special with his moves and especially his little spin move. But yeah, he got he, he got he's nice. But it's like it it, it, it seems like there's always going to be a time where rookie year Ag- Aguilar rears its ugly head, and and we're mad at it right now because they've actually played big parts into the slow start that we have right now. But I don't know. I, I'm I'm. He not he not Isel Jenkins level on the Eagles. Um, bottom line, he was on a Super Bowl team and he contributed um, pretty well to that team. So I think because of that, he'll always get he'll always get some kind of benefit of the doubt when we're talking about people like Burnt Toast and and all of those cats. But no, he's gonna have his place. He gonna he gonna be known for dropping passes. That's never gonna leave. No, go ahead, boy, boy. Receiver with no arm, <laughs> pretty much. Yo, yo, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, boy's a legend now. He's a Philadelphia legend. They got to bring him out during the game or something, man. But um, <laughs> but how about this one though? Let's go to Chicago. Let's go to Chicago for a second, because uh, I don't know if B also saw this, but the Chicago Bears released a video ahead of the controversial donning of the 1936 throwback jersey. So they're supposed to wear the 1936 throwback jersey, and there's controversy with those jerseys because that was a time when the league basically didn't allow black players. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So people got upset. Like, didn't allow black players. Yeah. 
<laughs> while yeah. you wearing the jerseys at a time when the league was, you know, wouldn't allow black players to play. So they made them do this whole after school PSA looking thing where they came in and talked about all their community service and how they're going to try to inspire change. And um, don't even ask how. And, uh, you know, <laughs> the reasons why they're going to be proud because they will be the first black players to wear this this particular uniform and it's showing progress and, uh, you know, a whole bunch of butter biscuits talk. Yeah, you know right. So they had cats up there like Mitchell because they have they have like a little inspired change group on their team. Every team probably has them now. It was about six dudes up there. B, if you didn't see it, um, Trubisky, uh, the chairman of the team, Trey Burton, um, Hicks, you know, a couple of black players. And what they're doing now, they claim that there was a lot of dialogue around whether or not you know it was okay for them to wear this. But what they're trying to do. They're trying to flip it into some, well, you know, these will be the first African-Americans to wear these jerseys. But it, once again, to me, you know, the, the analogy we can use is like, you know, this whole seat at the table type thing. Like, why do we keep trying to sit at tables that people do not want us to sit at? Why are we but 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 why are we trying to wear like why do you want to be the first African Americans to wear some jerseys that they wore when they were telling Yo. you to get out of this league? Because I don't know if y'all remember the NFL began as an integrated league. They actually kicked black people out of the league and from like thirty two to 45 or something like that. Like, they kicked black people out of the league and, and, and yeah. you know, basically told them, like, yeah, you started here, but we don't want you here. So why are we, why are they pressed to wear these jerseys? They're they pressed because slavery, slavery works. Slavery works. The mentality of the slave is still very, very, very prevalent. The house Negro is the most prevalent Negro, and the field Negro is rare. Yo, they love a seat at the table. They love a seat Yo, at the table. Guess who else got a seat at the table? <laughs> the house needs. <clears throat> anyway, they they want a massive <laughs> butter biscuit, so they found Sean, a way to get some massive butter biscuit. John Corey. Yo, shout out to awesome shout out way. John That's Corey because J Lo and Shakira are going to be splitting time at the Super Bowl halftime show. Um, so we can only assume Yo. that recognition played a part. And getting those sisters, I mean, those ladies to the table. Yo, that Shout lineup, that there. lineup is so, that lineup is so fire. If we was in two thousand three, <laughs> <laughs> Rock Nation in the building, Ov baby. Um, <laughs> yeah, what else happened, man? <laughs> what else happened? Yo, man. Um, another another sad story, man. The big three star Andre Emmett, man, was shot and killed in Dallas. What appears to be an attempted robbery. Um, That's crazy. The video was like, yo, it's like when I saw the video, I was like, come on, cause like my man is sitting in his Range Rover. Um, it's two in the morning. I'm racing, and I'm, I'm not victim blaming. That's not what I'm saying. Don't Wait, get me wrong. Let me um, clarify before car. Jimmy goes any farther, because I know y'all probably like, well, who the hell was recording a robbery murder? He was sitting in his driveway, oh, so his okay. his Nest doorbell camera or one of the cameras at his house caught most of the action. Go ahead, Jim. No, it's just it's just sad, man. He was sitting in his driveway. Cats run up, tell him, like, you know, um, get down on the ground, give it all up. He tries to take off running. And for some reason, they turned a robbery into a homicide. They, like, go behind him and start letting the blicky go. I'm like, hold up. Why? Like, he's running away. He left the car there, left everything there, and you just start cutting at him. Like, it was just kind of weird. Um, the whole thing is weird, man. This is, why I, this is why I don't come outside past, like, 8 o'clock, like, you know, eight o'clock come. I'm in the house, man. Like, yo, know, as an adult, I do like what mom used to tell me as a kid. Like, yo, when the, when the night lights go out, you gotta come in. Like, cause it gets it gets dark and y'all cats like y'all cats start acting crazy. Like, why yeah. are you shooting at the man running away? Yeah, yeah. I mean, at that point, he ran. Go take the truck, or at, at, for real, for real, you're right at his house. So if you really want to just rob him, then he's gone. You know. Do what you got to do real quick, but I don't understand running after him to kill him either. Was it a thing where he saw our faces? And I don't know. I don't know. But 
All right, it, so it was, Casey Mack is getting a little bit. Shout out Casey to him because he's like. Casey Mack gave some. Uh, Casey Mack. Oh, yeah, because uh, Casey Mack is in Dallas. And he is the first. He's, in, he's down there. He said um, yeah. he had an altercation with two cuts at a club that same night, and they followed him. And they uh, already caught one of them. So there's always more to the sick. story. So they were coming to kill him anyway. They probably yeah, were going to uh, rob him, but since he ran, they were like, well, we're not going to get nothing. So but my just, thing is, you have an altercation so at the Mack, club. Did they shoot him in the back? Because he ran. No, like, they didn't take anything. He said they didn't even take anything. Once they shot him, they, they peeled off. So that was well, personal. But my thing at is, that point, you got to peel off. But my thing is, I'm, like, I'm um, saying, I think had he not jumped out and ran, I think they probably would have robbed him at that point. Even if they were still going to, you know, kill him, they would have gotten something had he not ran. Once he ran, I guess at that point, it was just revenge for whatever altercation they had um, in the club. And shout out to my Philadelphia Phillies, man. We have to bring this up real quick in the middle of this. Shout out to them for going into the week, having a shot still at a wild card and and losing all four games to the Nets. Like, you don't win any games when you got a shot at the playoffs. (laughs) Shout out to them, though. But, yeah, man, Andre Emmett, because we talk talk about Joe Johnson all season. Andre Emmett is the second leading scorer in the big three. Um, I believe he may have been the MVP in in a season pass. Don't quote me on that. Season prior, season prior he was. He was yeah. busting their tail. All, all is, this, uh, you have an altercation with someone in the club, so you follow them to the crib. At no point as you're following them do you like, yo, maybe I should just go home. Like, this is stupid. At no point does that cross your mind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you must have been drunk or something. Like, come on, cuz. Like, I understand, like, getting emotional in the moment, but sometimes, like, yo, cooler heads just don't prevail in 2019, huh? Anyway, man. So now Hello. you two dudes are going to be – he's gone. He can't take care of his family. He's gone. And you two dudes, like one of y'all locked up, so he's going to definitely snitch. So other boys going to be locked up and, and for what? Like, come on, man. What's wrong with you people, man? Anyway, um, Tommy Smith and John Carlos. Shout out to the OG John Carlos. Uh, Tommy Smith and John Carlos will finally be inducted into the U.S. Olympics and Paralympics Hall of Fame. It's about time. So okay. Salute those gentlemen. <laughs> they, um, okay. <laughs> Yo, Amer- we move forward, America is already on the wrong side of history for that, so it's too late now. And shout out to our old yeah. head, John Carlos. Uh, Jimmy and I had the pleasure of sitting and talking to the old head for a couple of minutes uh, a few years ago. Yo, my man, and by the way, two years ago, John Carlos still was angry about like 50 years ago. <laughs> yeah, like, he sure still was. feels some type yeah. of way about the country and how he was treated. Like He, he didn't get mm-hmm. over it yet. So I just want to put that out there. So I got um, the impression yeah, too, Jim, that he felt a little some type of way about Tommy Smith too. But um, yeah, I I'm did too. But I wasn't right gonna there. put that out there. But I, I, I got the same feeling. But I wasn't <laughs> I'm gonna leave it right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, not elaborate on that. <laughs> I mean, he gave sense. He, he sent some subliminals. They saying, "Yeah, you really a bitch." <clears throat> but go ahead though. I'm gonna let you guys get the birthday shout out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a little, <laughs> was a little something there. All right, uh, quick birthday shout outs, man. Shout out to the Queen Serena Williams, who turns. 38 years old. Yo, remember when they were teenagers with beads in their hair? Now they women. Voluptuous. So the white years men that old. win every um, Much to bees dismay, married to a white man. <laughs> but happy birthday uh, to Serena Williams, the greatest tennis player. Here's, here's where people get upset because I think she's definitely, and, and, you know, I think she's sticking around now so she can make sure she get that record so there's no doubt. But I already think she's definitely the greatest women's tennis player of all time. When you say that, when you make that distinction, lately I've heard a lot of people, I mean, mainly women, mainly black women, they say, well, why you got to put that in there? How come she can't be the greatest tennis player of all time? Um, Probably because, you know, Pete Sampras and them probably bust her ass. But, but if you're just going on, accomplishments, accolades, and what you've done for the sport, I think she absolutely has an argument for being the greatest tennis player of all time. I think sometimes we forget, like, we don't have to, somebody doesn't have to go head up with somebody, you know, for that actual title. It could be a lot about the impact and that kind of stuff. And I think she's definitely had more impact than some of the men that we consider the greatest tennis players of all time. But, you know, they played. I don't know about all that. But shout out to her. Happy birthday to Happy Serena. Birthday. Yay! 
And a rest in peace birthday shout out to Craig Ironhead Hayward, who was born September 20th, 1960, died of brain cancer um, May 27th, mm. 2006. Probably was brain cancer, probably brought on by a little CTE because Craig Ironhead Hayward, you can judge by his nickname. I mean, his, his, never, name is, his name is he Ironhead. He never saw a linebacker that he didn't want a truck, so he didn't go around anybody. So, Ever. Uh, with your, Shout your, out to him. You to play with a bunch of My other grown day. men, and, <laughs> and for them to give you that nickname, like, <laughs> right. dude. What's wrong with you? Dude. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. All right, y'all can check out the website, worldroomsports.com. Um, call in and speak with us real quick. We're about to talk a little bit of football before we get out of here. 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted. If you already listen from your phone, just press 1 if you want to talk. And we oh, – I was just about to say we see you on the line, Rob, but I guess he thought we held, he was holding too long, so he hung up. If you're out there, Rob, call back, but call back now. Don't wait till the last two minutes of the show and try to call. Um, all right, what's up, Jim? What's up with it? Yes, sir. It is definitely time to talk about the NFL. Listen, man, do you or your business need a custom website? Well, for dynamic, yeah. professional, and most of all, affordable custom website yeah. solutions, hit up Digital Extreme Tech. Digital Extreme Technology, that's right. Website, digitalextremetech.com. Phone number, 267-205. 4203. Say, yo, I heard it in the war room. I need a website. Hook me up and get a, a custom one done. Stop using, you know what I'm saying, Facebook fan pages. Get you a custom website, digitalextremetech.com. It's time to talk about some foosballs. Yes, sir. They ain't got no singing no Thursday night football music. <laughs> you say song. I'm never there yeah, for any songs the, uh, Thursday night because I'm always catching the game yeah. right at kickoff. Cause I gotta bust my, I gotta much, get my yo. grub. <laughs> <laughs> yo, bust some grub. Yo, shout out to Jalen Ramsey, man. Who um, you know, everybody knows. I don't know if everybody knows, but he's been uh, in a little like tiff with his team because basically he doesn't want to be there. So <laughs> try to throw hands with the all coach. All of a sudden, on the sideline. Yeah, after yeah, he tried to throw hands with the coach, but after this, this past week has been kind of crazy because he missed practice with an illness. Um, after he had a, a, a back issue, after he had a hamstring issue, and then after that, he had to leave to attend the birth of his second child. So, like, day I after day, BS. my man has something different going on. What a, what a week he had. Right, because these phantom injuries are popping up. Yo, if y'all saw the press conference where his coach was trying to explain the injuries, it was hilarious because the coach was trying to fight back laughter as he was trying to you know, <laughs> defend the dude about his injuries. But it's like, like, like Jimmy said, like stuff just keeps popping up to keep him away from the team, thinking that they're working on a trade and maybe he'll be out of here before he has to rejoin the team. Um, uh, rumors spread well, that back. the Philadelphia Eagles actually sent a serious inquiry about him over the weekend, which included some kind of package where the Eagles would get Jalen Ramsey and the Jags would get Zach Ertz. I don't know if it's true or not, and I don't know how much damage control the Eagles will have to do now because I heard that it wasn't like I heard that the Jags brass, you know, were, were actually considering whatever the offer was, but their owner stepped in and put the kibosh on it because he still has faith that he can convince Jalen Ramsey to stay. So the Eagles have probably been in you know damage control mode with with Zach Ertz if this report was true. But yeah, he. Yeah. he he went from being sick, <laughs> like Jimmy said, to coming back from the quote unquote flu, then all of a sudden, you know, his back hurt, his hamstring hurt, and now Jalen Ramsey. And I'm gonna say his name like that because if y'all know Jalen Ramsey, I'm calling BS on the pregnancy thing because who he paid to say that he got them pregnant. Oh, 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 on that stupid stuff. You tell me. You tell me. You tell me. <laughs> you tell me. Yeah. Like, come on. Yo. Yeah, yeah. So they ain't got nobody pregnant. But no, on a serious note, him getting away from the team, I was telling Jimmy earlier, this girl probably like six months pregnant. And he was like, yeah, I got to leave for the birth. <laughs> <laughs> he going to be gone for like half of the season unless somebody trades him. <laughs> yo, it's utterly ridiculous, yo. 
it, it's crazy to watch how how this NFL season is like mad weird. Like outside of all the injuries going on around the whole league, these holdouts like it's I don't it just seems mad weird. Like so Melvin Gordon still ain't like report and he was holding out, but now all of a sudden he ends his holdout. And reported to the Chargers. I don't know what he accomplished throughout this whole process or what the problem was. He accomplished finding out that nobody values him. Like, he found out that he ain't Zeke. You ain't Zeke, man. Eh? Like, like, hold out. Go ahead. <laughs> and I think like, Melvin Gordon is a very good running back, but, but facts are you're holding out for a notoriously cheap organization, for one. So, you know, they break down a few pegs. They brought them down a lot of pegs, actually, because they were just going to ride it out and just play with who they had. Um, yeah, he accomplished absolutely nothing but embarrassing himself. But, Jimmy, you said the season has been weird. You know why it's been weird? Because the NBA put the battery in everybody's back. So all these players out here trying to, trying to you know, exercise their power because they think they're like the NBA now. They're thinking we're gonna take we're gonna take back our power. We're gonna be the, under control of our own destiny. Okay. It worked for some of them, but it's a lot of them out like this. A whole different plantation right here, and they don't play that <laughs> in the NFL, and they find it out the hard way. Yeah, <clears throat> pretty much, man. Like it's just weird, man. These dudes is out here tripping, man. They ain't tripping. They tripping, tripping. You can't take Yo, back man. power from a league that can cut you. And get out of the the contract on their end at any point. Can't take back any power on that kind of league. Yeah. Like, like, what did Le'Veon Bell accomplish with his holdout? He pretty much played yeah, himself. Absolutely nothing. And Gordon he played saw his that life happen, away. And he still attempted to do it. Yo, A. B. played his life away. Um, Gordon played. Everybody playing their life away. Like the only Randy flex might have a little bit of so was Zeke. Zeke was the only flex that worked. But did it really work though? I mean, he got his dough, and he. Uh, I mean, like we said, the contract. The, yeah, the contract when you really break it down is not as impressive as it sounds from the surface. But you know, at the end, he got his dough. See, the NBA makes no qualms about it. Like they're a league of stars. The NFL tells you up front, like, yo, it's about that shield. And they, <laughs> they tell you. They tell you what it is. Nobody is bigger than the game. In NBA, you can make the argument some players are bigger than the game. Like you can make that argument. Like you can't do that in the National Football League. Game. I don't think it's an argument. I don't think it's an argument at all. I think it's just fact. Yeah, you can't do that in the nipple. You can't do that though because like yo, you won't be here and in two weeks. Cats will forget you existed. That's just what it is. Think you about it, Jim. You chose to if the if the NBA wasn't just handing out you know brink you know driving up Brinks trucks to people's uh, doors and cats felt that they had to hold out to get money. Like imagine LeBron publicly saying, "I'm going to hold out." Come on, man. They'd be at his doorstep in 30 minutes <laughs> with a blank check. Like, all right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I tried to play you. Like NFL, like go ahead. Yo, Le'Veon Bell had to sit out a whole season and then got then got a contract that wasn't that impressive. And he was the he best running back in the league. <laughs> What it is yeah, in the man, NFL, like, though, I think the wrong players, the wrong position are trying to flex. Running backs aren't important anymore. Yeah, it's got to be the you QB, be the and they actually separate the QB and give them good deals, and everybody I'm else pay. has they pay, they pay bad quarterbacks all-time money, so the QB don't have to do that. It's, it's weird, man. It's, it is weird, like Jim said. Yeah. Definitely, right. definitely is, man. Yo, but we got a couple minutes left, though. Um, let me get you guys thoughts on your Eagles tonight. Eagles and Packers is a big game tonight. Um, you know, what you guys think about this game coming up tonight? Um, Eagles got to stop making early mistakes, man. They got to stop getting behind. Um, this is not this is another team you're not going to want to get behind on. The Green Bay Packers are actually being led by their defense for a change. So it's like. The Eagles find themselves in an urgent position, and it might not be a great position because the dude that we call the metal arc lemon of football is still due for a big game. Like, they're undefeated, but they've been carried by their defense. Never in the history of his professional career has that happened. So at some point, mm-hmm. you know, he has a new coach. 
and they're trying to learn each other, pride is definitely kicking in on that side because he never thought that he'd be carried by this defense. This could be a bad night for Philly. Or Eagles need to take advantage of it while they're still trying to learn each other, the quarterback and the coach, and and, and get out of here before dude has those big games that he's due for. I think they can get it, but, you know, Aaron Rodgers is always the X factor. What do you think, B? What do you think about – oh, b you got any thoughts? Aaron about the bu- – Metal Lock about the bus all right. <laughs> I thought it'd be awesome to sleep. Yo, but let me ask you a quick question though. What do you think? Awesome about to explain the, uh, the coverage. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think um, about the um, the criticism that Carson Wentz has been facing after the first three weeks? Because uh, you um, know we always talk about heavy as the head that wears the crown, and now he's the only guy there. I don't think it's fair because you're looking at a ton of injuries. And his old line, while they're rated on paper, the be- top two, top three in the league, they've been playing like bottom 30. However, to whom much money is given, much blame and much celebration and acclaim will come. So he's getting the blame that comes with being the highest paid player and the quarterback on a team. When you analyze and break down the game, he's really playing pretty good Outside of the first quarter, he got to step it up there. But he's playing good, but his receivers have to catch the ball and his O-line has to block. Period. How about you, Dad? What do you think about it? Um, The criticism? Um, Yeah. Like you said, I mean, you explained that to to Tobias the whole time. Um, I don't really think the criticism – I think Carson Wentz is actually playing – very well. Um, there was a few, there was some points in the Atlanta game early where he looked like Cam Newton and it looked like his scope was broken. But other than that, like he's been playing very well. Sometimes it's like, he, sometimes you can't overcome what everyone else is doing. Um, but like you, you said, can't you overcome the throwing you the ball to Nelson that. Aguilar and he ain't got no <laughs> arms. Quarterback job is to spread the, the, the cheer, spread the credit when they win, and to take the blame when they lose. So he just has to go out there and lead. Like a lot of people have called that into question as well. Um, because there's, cause I heard some people like Max Kellerman admitting that he's been playing well, but he was like, how come this team won't play for him like they play for Nick Foles? I really think he was overblowing that whole concept and notion as well. But that's been called into question as well. They say, okay, he's playing well, but a lot of these guys wouldn't be playing this lackadaisical. They wouldn't be dropping these passes. They would be blocking better for um for Nick Foles. I tend to disagree with that. And this week, I don't know if y'all saw this clip, but they were really overblowing this clip of the offensive line when they seem like to be standing around on a pass play. Um, the easy explanation for what, for that was, they were blocking for a couple of seconds. At that point, they thought the ball was gone. They know what the play call is. The ball is supposed to be gone. They had no idea that Carson Wentz, you know, kind of that's basically Carson's like fault. Still had the ball. So everybody's pointing out, like, look at this. They don't even want to block for him. They're just standing around. Dude, they did their job. The play was supposed to be something quick, and he held on to the ball. So that's on him. So do you think you? So you you don't think it's anything to them playing different for him as it did the other guy? No, I don't. I don't think there's anything to it. Um, shoot, these dudes got pride too. These dudes, <laughs> they got to get their checks too. They're, they're trying to get the Brink truck too, so they they got to perform. Um, okay, all right. Well, let's see. I'm not saying they don't like Nick better. I wouldn't say that at all. But you know, I, so, I don't so think there's anything often... to that. He's going right, to well, a lot of young dudes who are nervous right now. <laughs> Thank you, brothers and sisters, for joining us for another briefing in the warm shot to everybody in the chat room, Facebook, all the social media platforms. So for the people that got through, we appreciate those that didn't get through. Listen, you know, we always be here next week. Special thanks to Gus Griffin and Fred, for, Fred Purdue for contributing to this episode. Tune in next week live right here on demand as we review NFL week four and preview week five and catch up on everything happening in the world of sports. So until then, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the start of next week. And remember, we are always around. Find us at the Hub. Find all of our work at the Hub, our social media contacts on the Hub, everything, warroomsports.com. Also, 
Get my book, Sports the Book. You can go to sportsthebook.com or right back at that hub, warroomsports.com. Until next time, everybody, don't accept mediocrity. Be steadfast in the war against ignorance, and we'll see you chumps on top. Let's go, man! www.warroomsports.com What? Ain't no more to it.